Okay, we're going to roll into our post-race uh, media availability for the Geico 500. We've been joined by our second place finisher, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Chevrolet, Jimmy Johnson, and also been joined by our fourth place finisher, driver of the number 21 Motorcraft Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center Ford, Ryan Blaney. And as Jimmy and Ryan discuss here. Sorry. No, you're Thanks totally good. No good. I'm talking um, to my hero here, so I'm <laughs> you're good. Um, Jimmy, we'll start with you. A solid second place finish, but just walk us through those last um, laps there. They they appeared to be very intense on TV, so we can only imagine how intense they were actually in the car. Yeah, I mean, you work all day long to be in that position, and you just, frankly, you just don't want to mess it up. And with everybody running the top, um, and over the years of having that situation at the end uh, being aggressive has bit me many times so I, I was trying to be as patient as I possibly could and the only real control I had to win the race was to make a move off of four or, or kind of coming into the trial and I just I knew that was my only opportunity and then I also knew there's no chance that the guys behind me were gonna wait that long so uh, we, we did break away and we had maybe a seven or eight car breakaway and then a pretty good gap to the next group and I think our small breakaway there just wasn't a lot of energy in that group to to create a pass for the the lead so Denny found a way around the 21 and then um, you know that was really all the all the energy that the the lanes had and, and when that happened we lost kind of our momentum on that last lap and, and Junior really had things in control in my opinion once um, once the 11 got inside the 21 so uh, very happy with the finish um, I didn't mess it up. I don't know what I could have done differently to win. Certainly tried, but uh, I'm just really happy I didn't screw it up because I've done that plenty of times to the, come to the finish. And, and Ryan, um, incredible run for your team. Um, you mentioned in your TV interview about having the rookie stripe, but it didn't appear that you had one today. So talk a little bit about your run today and coming home in the fourth place finish. Yeah, we had a good car all day. We, we had speed and qualifying, and <clears throat> we got to run up front a little bit during the day, and you know, we got shoved to the back a few times. and. We're able to work our way up through there, and, and I learned a little bit throughout the race to kind of know what to do to get back to the front, and um, and we really just kind of were lucky to be in that position towards the end of the race, and, and I think you know we made a couple good moves about three quarters of the way through, and, and guys started to go with us a little bit more, and, and luckily the moves that we were making worked out to where guys trust you a little bit more, and, and I think that helped us you know get in the right spot for the end of the race, and. Um, I knew Denny was going to make a move. I knew I, I, I thought he was going to do it later than what he did, but um, I didn't think he had a, a big enough run to, to get to us and, and pull out and pass us. But uh, luckily, Sam Hornish picked me up there on the front stretch, and, and we were able to get get back up through there. So um, not a bad day, you know. After blowing up at Atlanta or Daytona and um, and Texas, it's nice to get a good finish for these guys. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions for Jimmy R. Ryan. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Mike and then go to Holly. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Henry, uh, USA Today. Guys, Jimmy's already talked a little about this, but uh, what about the f lack of formation of a second line over the past four, the last four, five, six laps? Um, you guys didn't really pull out, but almost nobody did back to 15th or 20th. Nobody really wanted to go out there. What was going on? I don't, I don't know why it, it, it happens that way. If you're the first couple of cars, you're relatively content. But if you're back further, it, it's so frustrating. And I watched, I think the 19 pulled down and uh, started some kind of lane. And everybody just took his spot on the outside. And I, I don't know what creates that in the driver's minds. It says, OK, we're all going to ride at the top. And anybody that pulls out, you just fill his spot and he drops. And it's weird. It doesn't happen every time, but it does happen every now and then. And today was one of those days. All right, Holly, we can get a microphone to Holly. Thank you. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Um, Ryan, what was going through your head riding single file? Were you more concerned about the guys behind you, or were you formulating a way to try and get by uh, Jimmy and Junior? And what was that like? What was the intensity like for you? I was really more focused on Denny. Um, like I said, I knew he was going to make a move eventually, and I was just trying to see if he was laying back to try to get a run. Um, you know, I just didn't know when that was going to happen. I figured it was going to be with one or two to go, and that's really all I was concerned about is trying to look in the mirror and, and make sure you don't get left out. 
which we did, unfortunately. But um, that's really all you're thinking about is trying to stay in front of the guy when he makes that move. Because um, if I make it by myself, no one's going to go with me. You know, they just fill the hole. So I was kind of at Denny's mercy right there. But um, we were just a little bit too late pulling out in front of him. All right, we'll go upstairs for a couple questions. <laughs> Lee Spencer, motorsport.com. Can you guys, I mean, to, to kind of follow up on Henry's question, is it just safer to maintain that single file um, run, or is it just more of a, a situation of, you know, watching what the tempo does with the race and before you decide what you're going to do or if who's going to pull out or if you feel comfortable enough to go with them? I, I think it's it's not safety, like I'm going to crash, I'm going to get hurt, so I don't want to make that move. It's it protects your running order and if you're in 10th and you pull out you know the lines i don't know how many cars are on the lead lap but everybody's knows the tail so you take a 10th and finish 30th or something so it's more about preserving where you're running and in the fact that the amount of numbers in a lane makes that lane successful when there's 43 and knows the tail i mean you just you can't you can't pull down unless there's quite a few that are going to go with you. So uh, I think it's more about preserving your running order. And uh, you almost have to throw the mindset out of advancing and just not go backwards is kind of what happens, I think. Additional questions upstairs? OK, we'll come back downstairs. Ryan, Tim is playing with Pissed Out Radio. Uh, you know, the, the 200 cars, 88 and the 48, they are in they were, you know, both first and second. If you would have pulled out, you know the 48 wasn't going to go with you. Did you have anybody in mind that would probably go with you if you dropped down? It's, it's kind of what Jimmy was saying in the previous question. You know, you're kind of just protecting your running position. Uh, if you go, you know, too soon, no one's really going to go with you. Um, there was maybe a 10% chance Denny would have gone with me, and that might have dragged more guys, but uh, it, it was going to be tough to, to do that and get a big enough run to – you know, get along, get by Jimmy one, and, and Dale is a, is a whole other story because he can just block you the lane. So um, I, I didn't really think anyone was going to go with me. Like I said, I was kind of at the mercy of whatever Denny did there. And if he pulled down and the 11 pulled down, I was pulling down the hell with that 88. I want to win a race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's Don Coble with Morris News Service. For, for both of you, and especially you, Jimmy, um, can you – can you describe the atmosphere after that race was over and uh, what it meant to to Dale and all these fans? I mean, this is this is probably the the fullest we've seen these grandstands here in years and years and years. And um, the, the, the just the raw emotion and, uh, that that you that you saw out there. Yeah, I, I think I know where you're going with the question and, and maybe what Junior's experiencing and his fan base. Is that what you're thinking, Don? Or just because from from my well, yeah, yeah. I guess from my my viewpoint, uh, you know, I'm looking at the dynamic of our two cars being built in the same shop and all that goes into it. Uh, Greg Ives getting his first win, Junior locking into the chase. You know, th those are the things that went through my mind first. As you were asking the question, I thought about the history of of Senior here, the fan base. Dale's been very successful here, and it's probably bigger than I realize, and maybe what you're alluding to, but. From a team dynamic, I'm, I'm real happy. I mean, it just strengthens our race shop. Um, you know, to finish one, two with the cars and the morale boost it gives the, the company and, and our shop. You know, that's where my mindset is. All right, well, we'll go to Jay and then Ryan. Okay, we'll come. Uh, Jay Pennell with Fox Sports. Uh, after the race, Carl Edwards was uh, not too pleased that uh, when he was spinning down the track, uh, Nobody was really slowing down. Uh, obviously, NASCAR didn't throw the caution. But is there some sort of like protocol when the car's spinning and there's no caution, or do you just still uh, hammer down on the throttle and keep going? Want that one? Uh, um, well, the only, the only, I got it. I got it. The, the only He's thing. He's got to answer these tough ones at some point, uh, you know. I guess so. Knock that rookie uh, off. <laughs> the, the only thing I can say about that is, you know, half of it is, you know, the guys want, get, want to get past the wreck as quick as possible. And I think that's half the reason why you see them, you know, wide open is because they're afraid of him coming back down the racetrack or, or coming up the racetrack. They don't want to get collected in it. Um, I didn't see how he spun if he was right in the middle of the track or what. But um, 
I think that's that's really most of the reason is just guys want to get by it and they don't want to get caught up in it. All right, we'll go back to Don for a follow-up question and then to great, Ryan. Great answer. Yeah. Sure. I was I, I wanted Ryan to also respond okay. about the, the fan reaction and everything that was going on after the race and um, how loud it was and everything out there. Ryan, if you can just respond to. Yeah, um, actually, I looked up uh, off of four or through the trial coming to the checkered, and I think everyone was on their feet. So, I mean, it's cool to see atmosphere. Cool for, uh, you know, you talk about the history of this place and how, how good Dale is here and then how good Senior was. So, um, it, it's, it's really cool to see. And um, it, it was cool to see all the fans out there today. You know, it was, I think we had a sold out crowd. So, that's cool to, to really see them. And, and hopefully, uh, they saw a good show and a good finish. All right, we'll go to Ryan. McGee, right here, please. Uh, Ryan McGee, ESPN, I'm, either one of you guys, but I'll start with Jimmy. Out on pit road talking to drivers now, listening to you guys in here, there's a little bit of bewilderment like with us at Watch and also either within it, like why there wasn't more in the last couple of laps. Is it a paralysis by analysis, or how, how would you explain Because there are a lot of people talking about everything they thought about during the last couple of laps, but none of it actually happened. Does that make sense? I'm going to pretend I know what those big words meant that you asked. Um, <laughs> But the, uh, I think it was here in McMurray one, maybe two years ago or something. It, and we had the same deal where everybody just rode around the top. Um, being, you know, just from my standpoint in second, I, I would have fallen back to 15th or 20th if I went any time before on being on the front straightaway. So that, that was my opportunity and, and maybe for the guys further back, you know, you start working around for that final lap where you try to make a move and how much distance you need to close and all that kind of thing. So I, I think everybody was just protecting. Um, and, and it's just weird to see one unfold and you stay single file at the top that long. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. It's just mind boggling. But I, I knew my best chance to win was making a move off of four. Denny made his move the lap before on Ryan going into three and it just, our energy of our draft just died out and there wasn't an opportunity. All right, we're going to go to Jordan and then take our final question from Kenny. Go ahead, Jordan. Jimmy Johnson over here. To your right. Uh, Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Um, was Dale being any more or less aggressive as he was in the lead? I only ask because Jeff had commented that he, seen, he, he thought that Dale was being extra aggressive because he wanted to win, he needed to win to get in the chase, and that he was doing anything he can to protect the, his position. Do, would you agree with that? Yeah, in the lead, the times I chased him, um, you know, he definitely was, was being aggressive. But what I saw, where I saw him most aggressive was in traffic. Um, he was relentless with, with the run. He didn't ever choose to kind of push the car in front of him and help him. I mean, every time he, he had an opportunity to advance, he took it. And uh, even creating lanes up through the middle, um, swapping back and forth, trying to find a way by the leader. I can just remember seeing the, his rooftop down, up, down, up, like two or three times, just in three and four as he had a run on someone. I'm like, wow, you know, go get it. So I just think he was, I thought he was more aggressive coming through the, through the field than uh, maybe defending. All right, and Kenny for our final question. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. For Jimmy, uh, this also pertains to Jeff. Uh, for the second time this year, he had a pit road uh, penalty that seems like it, you know, played a big role in, in his finishing position out there. Is that, does that surprise you that he would be caught like that? Or is it more of an indication of just how tight the new pit road regulations are with the cameras and everything? Yeah, I know that the other, I don't know what this infraction was, do you? Was it speeding? It was speeding. Um, he felt like the infraction, I can't remember the track that it was at, where it hurt him so badly. Maybe it was a short track. Martinsville. Martinsville. Um, he felt like he was being real aggressive there and sensed that he might have been too aggressive, and he, and he was. I don't know what, is, what he feels here, but, um, man, it's track position is so important here, even here, and, and to have control of the, the lane like what Junior did at the end. You can just control it and, and take care of it. That He could have been um, aggressive, plus the caution came out while he was on pit road, and I don't know if that caught him in a weird situation. and. They weren't paying attention to their marks on pit road or, or what it might be. So uh, I think the caution may have played a factor in it. All right. Jimmy, Ryan, congratulations on solid runs this afternoon, and we thank you for your time. Thank you.